Today, we're getting the whole thing wet. I'm Matthew, your BRS beginner guru, and making salt water begins with very clean water. Tap water contains all sorts of impurities we don't want in our salt water fish tanks. Copper and ammonia are bad for fish, chlorines will hurt sensitive coral, and nitrates and phosphates will fuel nuisance algae growth. Luckily, we can remove all of those things with an RODI filter. RODI stands for Reverse Osmosis Deionization. While they may come in different configurations, all clean tap water using the four same filters. Stage one, the sediment filter, removes larger pieces of debris. It's essentially a sponge filter. Stage two, the carbon block, uses activated carbon to remove toxic chlorines, heavy metals, and other organic compounds. Stage three, the reverse osmosis filter, forces pressurized water through a membrane, leaving behind anything that's not pure H2O. Stage four, deionization resin, uses positively and negatively charged beads to remove anything that may have escaped through the reverse osmosis membrane. If you wanna dive into the nitty gritty and learn everything there is to know about RODI filters, there's a link in the description. But for everybody else, a standard four stage filter, like this one that comes with a pressure gauge, TDS meter, and secondary water saving RO membrane will work great. Making RODI water is actually really easy. Connect the red line to your water source, whether that's a faucet, an outdoor spigot, or the cold water line under your sink. Place the dirty water line, the black tube, down the drain, and the blue clean water line into a bucket or trash can. With any brand new RODI system, don't use the first five gallons for your aquarium. Just water some plants with it instead. Be sure to set a timer to check on your water and or install a float valve in case you forget, that way water doesn't go everywhere. The great thing about RODI filters is they are 100% upgradable, so as you progress through this hobby, you can add on as need be. They also will save you a ton of money versus buying pre-made salt water at your local fish store. Now that you have filtered RODI water, it's time to add the salt. Dry seawater mixes are a lot more than just table salt or sodium chloride. They contain a whole host of other major, minor, and trace elements found in the ocean that are essential for your coral health and growth. There are many great dry seawater mixes out there, but specifically for the beginner, I'd recommend Red Sea's Black Bucket Coral Pro. It contains elevated calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels when compared to other seawater mixes. This means that a beginner won't have to worry about dosing those things as long as they keep up with their water changes. Red Sea salts have specific mixing instruction, so here's how to do it. Start with a bucket of room temperature RODI water, no more than 68 degrees. Add a small mixing pump to the bottom of the bucket. Slowly add in the salt mix until you reach a specific gravity of 1.025 to 1.026. I personally use the Hanna salinity tester to check this, but you could use a standard refractometer as well. Mix the salt until it is clear, but no longer than two hours. Remove the mixing pump, then add a heater and raise the temperature to 78 degrees. Red Sea's Coral Pro Salt, or the black bucket as we call it, doesn't store well, so be sure to use all of it within 12 hours of mixing. If you do plan on storing your seawater for longer than 12 hours, we linked a video in the description below to help you choose the right mix for your situation. There's really no special secret to adding the salt water to your tank other than trying your best not to disturb the sand bed as much as possible. For our build, I'm just adding water to the rear filtration chamber, but you could just pour the water over your aquascape to disperse it as well. It's time to plug in your return pump and add in some mechanical filtration like filter socks or sponges. Add the seawater clarifying pouch and your cloudy water will be clear within 24 hours. Keeping a consistent water temperature will be absolutely essential to making your fish and coral happy and healthy. In the winter time, if our heater works to malfunction, and they do from time to time, all of our livestock could be dead within a matter of hours. And for some of us, in the summer months, our water temperature will be pushing up above 80 degrees. We need to keep our tanks within a specific temperature zone 100% of the time without fail. And we need to know when there's a problem. Watch episode four to learn how. Thanks for watching, happy reefing, be well, and we'll see you in the next episode.